So Via takes a very different approach from Lyft and Uber uh, to the entire market, whereas Uber and Lyft have really come at this, from our view, in trying to create a better taxi, a better ride-hailing solution. We're looking at how do we create a better public transportation solution? How do we create a better bus, if you will? So our solution is fundamentally shared between multiple passengers who are booking a ride on their phone, so in that sense, similar to the other ride-hailing companies. But we are aggregating all those passengers into a single vehicle, finding the most efficient route, and in doing that, reducing congestion, reducing emission, and creating a much more accessible solution because the cost is so much lower. So how would you gauge the Lyft and soon-to-be soon to Uber IPOs? Are, are those a tide that lifts all, all boats? And if so, how would you assess uh, public market investor reaction so far? Yeah, I think, from, again, from Via's perspective, we, we certainly hope that it is a tide that lifts all boats. And I think it's very good to see companies in this space, in the ride-hailing, ride-sharing space, come out into the market, create some value and liquidity for investors. Uh, we think that's a good sign. We're certainly rooting for them. Uh, it would be great to have a really strong comp from our perspective. There seems to be this built-in expectation that once they are done going public, they'll be free to raise their rates. Right, and it'd be easy to do in a so-called duopoly. No offense to Via. Right. Um, is that, do you think they will? And what would that do to you guys? So, it, the science suggests that, that that may happen. There has been a lot of uh, a lot of discounting. We see that in the market as well. In oh my advance gosh! Of the IPO. Every other day, it's a thirty percent off right. your next ten rides. Right. If you're an Uber or Lyft rider, you're probably seeing it. And so, one has to suspect that that may change once the IPO is, is behind them. I, I do think what we'll start to see is that this is a very large market and. There's one solution which is really providing a single passenger share, sort of not shared ride that has, has, has the potential to capture a, a percentage of the market. It's not a particularly large percentage in our view. And then there's all the rest, everybody who's driving themselves, taking the bus, taking the subway, and someone needs to provide a solution for them or, or utilize technology to improve experience for those folks. And that's really where, where we see Via coming in. In terms of regulatory risks, uh, I know with these other two companies, what's been cited is, uh, you know, some of the headwinds around things like maybe congestion pricing here in New York, caps on the number of drivers, um, some of the other issues that we've seen, seen along the way. It sounds like because you're working with governments that maybe those aren't as risky for you. How do you think about it? So absolutely right. Actually, what we've seen is that these regulations have tended to benefit us. So in New York City, both New York State and New York City even have passed laws recently that have affected how much companies in this space need to pay drivers, congestion fees, soon, uh, in about a year, a year or two, uh, congestion tax on all vehicles, all private vehicles and trucks. And all of those tend to push people more towards public transportation, more towards the more affordable modes. So exactly what we're trying to do by reducing congestion, uh, having these rules that aim to reduce congestion, and VIA slots right into that. So usually these, these rules or these laws tend to be very beneficial from our perspective and also represent, in our view, good policy, good public policy. Have you given an update on your... on? plans to go public if you have them? Uh, we, we're absolutely looking at that as well. I think we're probably looking at sort of a two-year horizon, but uh, absolutely a very interesting from our perspective. When you